Hello everybody. So I've been getting a lot of comments and such uh, that have been asking me to reboot the Virtual World series that I did a long, long time ago. And I've decided that I'm going to do it, but we're going to do it a little bit differently than we did in the last uh, series. So in this video we're going to be talking about architecture, so what a virtual world is and what we're going to need um, to consider when we're going to be building it. So first, what's a virtual world? A virtual world is basically a multiplayer online game that allows players to interact with each other in a simulated environment. So um, they're often browser based. Um, in the past they've typically used Adobe Flash. Uh, I'm going to revisit this point in a second. And they potentially support a lot of players, right? So they're sometimes considered an MMO. So some examples that you might have seen in the past were like Club Penguin, Roblox, Habo, um, and there's many others that are out there. So let's consider what we need to do when we're developing a virtual world. So we're going to need a client and a server. So the client is basically for the player to use and the server connects all the other players together. So player actions like movement and, and messages and stuff like that need to be communicated to the server so that the information can be relayed back to other clients. So the more powerful the server that you're running, the more concurrent users, uh, which is all often abbreviated as CCUs, it can support. And scalability should be factored in if you're going for an MMO angle. Um, for example, you're going to want something like multiple server support because you don't want too many people on one server. Um, so the infrastructure for both the client and the server should easily be extendable because new features are often added to these types of games. So what are we talking about when we're talking about client and server? So the client is essentially responsible for player interaction or uh, the, user, the user interface. So it's responsible for taking input from the player and displaying information to the player in a in a pretty way that's sent from the server basically uh, it also has to process information about other players that is provided by the server and it's responsible for sending player actions to the server and drawing game elements the server is responsible for connecting players together listening to players for new actions and relaying those player actions to other players servers should also typically validate player actions because you don't want players to be able to um, you know, manipulate their client to be able to cause damage to other players that are playing your game. It's also responsible for the player authentication, uh, also known as like the login and registration. So in the old series, we used Adobe Flash for the client, and we used SmartFox Server for the server. And in this series, we're not going to be using either of them. And I'll talk about why in a minute. The new technologies we're going to be using though is HTML5 for the client combined with JavaScript and the server we're going to be, uh, implement our own server using Golang. So why are we using these? HTML5 we're using over Flash because Flash is being deprecated, uh, it's buggy, it's a security risk and it's built up a pretty bad reputation over the years. So browsers don't really like Flash anymore, um, by default. I'm pretty sure most modern browsers don't even enable it by default. They have to ask you to enable it because it's just such a security risk, really, because Flash is so dated. Um, and HTML5 is free, whereas the Adobe products um, can be quite expensive. So why are we using Golang for the server as opposed to SmartFox server? SmartFox server can be pretty expensive. Uh, their licenses are kind of insane. Um, with Golang, we don't have a software limit on the number of concurrent users we can have. So for SmartFox server, they have different licenses. And I think for free, you could only have up to 100 CCUs at once. Um, with our own server, we can have basically the hardware is the limit. Um, there's less bloat, and it's more maintainable because we're only going to be implementing what we're going to be using, where SmartFox server has a lot of stuff to cover a lot of different cases. And... So you may ask, why do we use Go as opposed to something like C or C++? And the reason is I want to try to keep this tutorial series more friendly to both people who are newer to programming and also younger people. And C and C++ have such a steep learning curve that using that doesn't really allow me to do that. And 
not only that, Go is also a good choice for a TCP server because it has uh, it it has good support for networking. Where working with networking and something like C plus plus is kind of uh, not it's not really fun. You have to deal with like system calls and a bunch of stupid stuff. Go provides a nice library to be able to quickly um, get a server up and running. And we learn more implementing our own server compared to using something like SmartFox server. Um, but we are going to be doing the server stuff a bit later in the series. We're going to be focusing on the client first. So what kind of requirements are we going to have for local testing and development? Well, we're going to want a code editor. You're going to want Go installed on the system. And we want any modern browser. So two of those criteria you likely already have, being a code editor and a browser. And Go, I will have a link in the description down below so you can install that for Windows. For production, we're going to want a few other things. We're going to want a virtual private server to host our Go-based server. And you're likely going to need somebody you're either going to need or you're going to need somebody who does have graphic skills um, because graphics are pretty important for these types of games or pretty much for all types of games. And these can kind of make or break or if people play your game. So for production, you might want somebody who has pretty good uh, graphic skills. On top of that, version control is highly recommended for all stages. I'm going to be using Git, and I will show you guys how to set that up uh, in, a, uh, in a future video. So in the next part, we're going to be talking about the client-to-server communication and uh, how we're going to be structuring packets and um, how we want to keep things consistent. That way, it's more maintainable. And common actions that a player can make that we'll need to consider when we're building the client to server bridge and we'll break down how we're going to implement that thank you guys for watching and i will see you guys in part two